In this video, I'm going to show you how to use DAX or Data Analysis Expression to create additional columns of information in your database model in Microsoft Power BI. So here I'm in Power BI Desktop, and I have two queries, one that contains sales information and one that contains salesperson information. If I were to look into my relationships view, I can see that these are connected by salesperson ID. And I happen to have the salesperson ID for my sales transactions uh, hidden in report mode. That way I'm only seeing salesperson ID one time as an option. It'll be less confusing for the individuals who are using this. So what we're going to do is we are going to add some additional columns here. I want to add a column called gross margin. So I can see my total cost and my total sales. Now I'm looking at the same information. In the visual on the left, I could see by invoice number and by item number. And in this particular example, we're assuming that item numbers can only appear once on a sales document. So these are individual line items. In the visual on the right, we are looking at it by customer number. It's the same data. They have the same totals. This one is detailed, looking at the very minute detail of line items. And the one on the right is actually aggregated or summed up by the customer ID. And we know how to create those. We could just drag out all the values in our tables and work on them that way. So what we're going to do is actually add gross margin. That is not a field that currently exists in our data set. If I look at the modeling tab, I have three different options here for creating DAX, measures, columns, and table. And we're going to focus on columns in this particular video. So the column will just simply be a mathematical equation of our total sales minus our total cost. And I could come up here and just click on new column, but I prefer to come over to the field on the right and right mouse click and choose new column here. And the reason I do that is I want to ensure that I am adding the new column in the query to add it to. So sometimes if you add it from the top, it might just add it to the first query in the list. In this case, it would have been okay, but I like to control that. And once I do that, it creates this new field called column, and it opens up my address bar. Now, if you've ever keyed in or entered in an Excel formula, or done T-SQL script, or uh, done something in MBX, you're going to find this is very similar. In DAX, we do things one formula or one function at a time, just like you do in Excel or with a select statement. So the first thing we want to do is change the name of it so it doesn't say column. So we're going to call this gross margin. And after the equal sign, we're going to put in our function or, or our formula. And in this particular case, there's IntelliSense built into Power BI. So as we start typing, it's going to tell us what we need. So I'm going to just start typing in the name of my field, which happens to be total sales. And as I start typing it, you could see just the functions or, and the fields that have the word total in it will appear. So I want total sales, so I'm going to go ahead and select that. If we look closer, you're going to see I see the name of my query and query names that have a space or a character in it will have single quotes around it. I like to put single quotes around all the queries. And then the name of the column or the name of the field will be in double brackets regardless of whether there's a space or a character. It's good form to always put in the query name. Not always necessary. One, you might only have one query, but you might add a query later. And two, if the field name is unique amongst all queries, you really don't need the query name. But again, it's better form and easier for someone who's coming in after you and looking at it. If you do put the query name in, Put it in a uh, single quote, so you know that's the query name. And then, of course, the field always goes in double brackets. Now, I'm going to put some spaces before and after the minus sign. That's not necessary. I just want you to see what I'm doing. So I've got total sales minus, and I'm going to look at total cost. So there's my total cost. And that's the whole function. I'll simply click on the checkbox to commit it. 
And now over on the right, you can see the DAX field is now called gross margin. And if I look over on the right, I now have gross margin as a field over here. And I could highlight it, and if I wanted to, I could turn it into a numerical field. I'm going to go ahead and do that now and set the decimal places to 2. So now I have my gross margin. While I'm at it, I'm going to also do these as well. Let's go back to the report view. And now I'm going to take that gross margin and drag it out onto both of these reports. And as you can see, the totals do match up. This one is done, as you can see, by line item. And this one is aggregated or summed by customer ID. So something else I do want to point out about uh, columns in DAX, they do get created when you refresh. So every time you refresh, the formula will automatically create and calculate. The other thing is it will add to your data size because you are adding a field. You're just doing it in DAX. And it is done row by row. And that's essential to understand because if you want to extend beyond the rows, for example, if I wanted to see a gross margin for uh, as a percent of all gross margins, then a column wouldn't be able to do that. The columns are only going to do things row by row. And we'll talk more about how we can do the percentage ones next week when we take a look at measures. So that's this video for today. We've started with the very basic, adding a column into our report. I'm going to go ahead and save it. And as always, I hope this helps.